Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE conversation and kickoff preview of the Mobile World Congress Barcelona event. It's a physical event that's going to be taking place in person. It will probably be the first hybrid big event, 68 days until the June 28th kickoff. You might've heard Telco DR, a Telco disruptor is on a mission to move the telco industry to the public cloud and, and, and it's taken over one of the biggest spaces this year from Ericsson, it's a big story. Everyone's talking about it. And of course the Cube is excited to be there and broadcast and be a partner with Telco DR. So I'm excited to bring on the founder and CEO of Telco DR, Danielle Royston. Danielle, great to see you. Thanks for coming on for this Mobile World Congress preview. Thank you so much for having me. I'm psyched to talk to you about this. It's going to be great. So Ericsson always has the biggest booth, 14 years. You're disrupting in Barcelona. I'm not people sure it's going to be on or off. It's officially on. It's happening and it's going to be a physical event. We're coming out of COVID, still a risky move. It's going to be a big hybrid event. It's going to be in person. Tell us the story. How did you guys um, come out of nowhere, a disruptor, take the biggest real estate in the place and turn it into a community event, a news event, a media event, everything. Tell us. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think it was March 9th, uh, a little over a month ago, Ericsson announced that they were pulling out of MWC and it's very analogous to uh, what happened in 2020. They were one of the first vendors to bail as well. And it kind of started this like tidal wave of people saying, can't do it. And I think the distinction now is that that was at the beginning of COVID. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, is it coming? Is it not? Is it safe? Is it not? We're now, you know, year. 50, you know, three, four months into it. Um, I think that when you look at where we are now, um, tr cases are trending down, the vaccine is up. And I think the legacy players were sort of backward looking. They're like, this is a repeat of 2020. We're gonna, it's not safe to go. We're gonna pull out. And I'm like, with hundred days to go and the vaccine ramping, I think I see it a different way. I think there's a really big opportunity. Um, John Hoffman, CEO of the GSMA had put out a two page missive on LinkedIn where he was personally responding to questions about how serious they were about making sure the event was safe and could be held. And my my view was this is going to happen. And with Ericsson pulling out, I mean, this is hollowed ground. I mean, this is, you know, a, you know, massively successful company that has customers literally trained like Skinner's chickens <laughs> to come to the same spot every year. And now I get to, you know, put out my shingle right there and say, welcome and show them the future, right? And instead of the legacy past and all the normal rhetoric that you hear from those, uh, you know, sort of dinosaurs, Ericsson and Nokia, um, now they're going to hear about the public cloud. And I'm really excited for this opportunity. I think the ROI on this event is instant. Um, and so it was a, it was a pretty easy decision. I think I thought about it for about mm, 30 seconds. So. It's a real bold move. And it's a, again, it's a risk. It pays off if it happens, if it doesn't, you know, you didn't happen, but you're like, it's like a, it's like the, the startups that put a Super Bowl commercial out for the first time. It's a big hit and it's, it's a big gamble that pays off, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Take us through, I heard, how did it all happen? Did you just wake up and saw it was open? Did the, how do you know that it was open? Was it like, um, does an email go yeah. out and say, hey, I got there, this huge space for Well, I mean, it was years. big news. It was big news in the industry that they were pulling out and all the journalists were like, oh, here we go again. You know, everyone's going to bail. Who, who's next, right? And, and everyone was sort of like building that sort of negative momentum energy. And I'm like, we got to squash this. So um, I put out a, a tweet on Twitter. I mean, I'm not the most followed person, but I'm kind of known in telco. And I was like, hey, GSMA, I'll take over the booth. And I don't think people even liked my tweet, <laughs> right? Like no likes, no retweets. Um, I reached out to a couple of journalists. I'm like, let's do an interview, let's do a story. Everyone's like, we'll have you on the podcast like in a month. And I'm like, what? So, so when John Hoffman had put out that letter, I had connected to him. And so I was like, oh, I'm connected to the CEO of the GSMA. So I went out on LinkedIn and I referenced the story and I said, John Hoffman, I'll take over the booth. And um, I think about 30 minutes later, he responded and said, let's do it. And I said, great, who do I talk to? And uh, I was in touch with someone within a couple of hours. And I think we put the whole deal together in 48. And I think wrote the press release 
and announced it on Friday. So happened on Tuesday the 9th announced uh, by that Friday. And I really, I was like, GSMA, we got to get this out and we got to stop yeah. the negative momentum of the show and get people to realize it's going to be different in June. This is going to happen. Um, let's go do it. And so I think they are, they're psyched that I stepped into the booth. It's a big booth. It's 65,000 square feet, 6,000 square meters for our for the rest of the world that uses the metric system. And um, I mean, that's huge. I mean, that's the size of a professional pitch in a, in a football field, a soccer field. That's a one and a half football fields. It's it's a ton of space. That's it's a huge. ton of space to fill up. That's huge. And I think what's interesting is this points out that the, this new business model of being connected, you were on LinkedIn, you connect to them, you get a deal done so fast. This is yeah. how, this is the direct to consumer and as a startup, you literally took over the primo space, the best space in the area. So congratulations. And, and the other Thank thing you. that's notable and why I'm excited to talk to you is that this kind of sets the table for the first global, what I call hybrid event. This will probably yeah. be a, a cornerstone case study in and of itself because we're still kind of coming out of the pandemic. People are getting vaccinated. People want to fly, they want to get out of the house. Yeah. You're partnering yeah. with theCUBE and the Cube 365 platform. And you know we love hybrid, we love doing events, the Cube, that's what we do with video. Now we're going to do a partnership with you to create this hybrid experience. What can people yeah. and guests who come to Barcelona or watch remotely expect? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of experiences that we're trying to drive in the booth. I think obviously demonstrations, um, you know, I can't fill 65,000 square feet on my own. I'm a startup, small company. And so I am inviting like-minded, forward-thinking companies to join me in the booth. I'm, I'm paying for it, providing a turnkey experience for those vendors. Um, and so I think what we have in common is we're thinking about future technologies like Open RAN on the network side, and obviously public cloud, which is a big part of my message. And so first and foremost, I, foremost there's you know come and see the companies that are driving the change the new technologies that are out there and what's available for for carriers um, to start to adopt and think about um, MWC is a meeting intensive uh, event um, deals are done at this show uh, in 2019 I think the stat is 65 billion dollars of deals were put together at the show and so a big component of the booth will be a place for executives to come together and have private conversations. Um, and so we're going to have that. So that's going to be a big piece of it. And I think the third part is uh, driving education and thought leadership. And so there's going to be a whole, uh, you know, uh, talk track, right? Tech topics, um, business topics, customer case studies, um, involve the hyperscalers and really start to educate the telco community around these new technologies. Um, but there'll be shorter talks. They won't be like hour long keynotes. We're talking 15, 20 minutes. Um, and I think one thing that we're going to do with you as you were just talking about with theCUBE is, um, you know, MWC was the first big show to have to cancel with COVID. Um, I think in 2019, sorry, 2020, the uh, the dates, it's always the last Monday in February and, and the rest of that week. And so that's like right at the beginning of that, of the COVID stuff, Italy was just starting to take off. And so it was one of the first shows that had to make a big call and decided to cancel, which they did. This is going to be one of the first shows that comes back online post-COVID, right? And so I don't think things just snap back to the way that they used to be. I don't think we as consumers are going to snap back to the way that we were operating. We're now used to being able to get curbside delivery from any restaurant in the city, right? I mean, it's just a, it's just a sort of a different expectation. And so partnering with the cube we really want to provide an experience that brings the virtual people into the booth typically in events like this you really have to be there to see it booths are kind of like unveil the day of the show what's going on um, one thing i'm trying to do is really educate people about what you can expect what can you see? This is what it's going to look like. And so we're going to start to share some pictures of the booth of, of you know, what it looks like. Number one, to drive excitement with the partners that are coming, right? Like you're going to be part of something really, really fabulous. I think number two, uh, uh, attendees can wait, I don't know, week of to make the decision to go. And so maybe if COVID continues to trend down and vaccines are are picking up steam, maybe they're like, it's safe for me to go and I want to go be a part of that. But I think from here on out, we're going to have sort of that virtual experience that's always going to be part of shows. And so we're going to experiment with you guys. We're going to have a live streaming event 
over the course of the, uh, you know, all MWC, it's going to be a way for people who are unable to travel or, you know, can't afford it, right, COVID or whatever, see what's going on in the booth. And it's going to be everything from listen to a talk to watch what you guys are uh, typically famous for, your awesome interviews. Um, we're going to have um, man on the street, you know, like, you know, we're here at a, at a demo station. Take us through your little demo. Um, we're going to have telepresence robots that people can reserve and, you know, cruise through the booth. The robot can go to a talk. The robot can watch on the, on the streaming thing. The robot can go to a demo. The robot can go to a meeting and it's controlled by the, the virtual attendee. And so experimenting, right? Like how do we make this great for virtual people? How do we make the virtual people feel part of the physical? How do the physical people feel the virtual people that are attending and really just make it feel like um, a community of yeah. both? So we're really excited. That's super awesome. And I think, one of, first of all, thank you for having, paying for everyone and, and, and including <laughs> theCUBE in that. Um, but I think this speaks to the ecosystem of open. You're bringing, you're creating an open ecosystem. And I think that is a huge thing. So for people who are at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, this is going to be a nice, safe, Place. It's a hang space as well as get deals done. It's going to be comfortable, it's going to be media center. We'll get you on the digital TV, but also you're also designing the first, what I call the first hybrid experience, not just having people having on-demand videos on their website, connecting Barcelona with other parts of the world, with media yeah. and stories yeah. and content. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that I to think me so. is going to be a great experiment slash upgrade. We'll see, we're going to see how it goes. Well, it so. was really, I mean, we all lived through 2020. I mean, some of the shows went on, AWS's reInvent um, happened. Uh, Google did like a crazy nine week program. It's very lonely to participate in those virtual events, right? You know, you kind of log on by yourself. No one's really tweeting about it. You're watching, you know, an event. The event is great, but it was really lonely. And so, you know, how, and, and I think what people love about the physical um, events is we're together and we're networking and we're meeting people. And so, you know, I think continue to evolve that experience so that virtual is not as lonely. Um, so we'll see, we'll yeah. see how it goes. You know, it's I got to say your, your vision is really aligned with us and others that are in this open innovation world. Because if you look at like the cube, Physical went away, we had no events. We did Cube Virtual, a new brand. It wasn't a pivot. It was an extension, a line extension of the Cube. Now the Cube's coming back to the physical. We're going to bring that Cube Virtual to connect everybody. So this is it. And, and it just amplifies the value of the physical event. So if done right, yeah. it's so much cooler. So, so that's cool. And what I want yeah. to get ask you on, on the physical side to kind of bring it back to physical is, um, there's still going to be keynotes, there's still going to be talks at Mobile World Congress. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that scheduled and I just saw last week, the GSMA announced you're going to be doing a keynote speech. <laughs> What's amazing, so yeah. how did that happen? So give us the lowdown um, on the keynote that you're doing. <laughs> I'm sure the entire industry is like, how <laughs> did that happen? And it probably has something to do with the fact that I have one of the biggest booths at the space. Um, I always, you know, put in a, a request to speak. Um, I feel that I have a, re a really exciting message to share with the industry um, over the last, um, I guess it's been nine or, or 10 months. I've really been trying to amplify, amplify my voice I have a podcast, I have a newsletter, I'm talking to uh, execs. I have a list that I literally go down one by one stalking each executive of like, have I talked to them? Like how I told them about like the power of the public cloud. And so I am super thankful that I have this opportunity to spread that, this message. And I'm, I'm planning a really epic talk. Um, just, I really want to shake the industry and this is, this is my opportunity, right? This is my opportunity to stand on the, um, the biggest stage in our industry um, and command a presence and send out my message. And I'm absolutely thrilled to go do it. And I hope I crush it. I hope it's like a mic drop experience and um, can't wait to do it. Well, we're looking forward to covering it and we love the open vision. We love the idea of public cloud and the enablement and, and the disruption because just like you got the deal, so fast, you could move fast with modern applications, with the cloud, moving at cloud scale, complete content game changer. So great stuff. So totally yeah. applaud that, looking yeah. forward to, and we're here to, to cheer you on and, and, and uh, Thank you. ask the tough questions. Um, I do want to get to, on Twitter yesterday though, you put out on um, TweetStorm, 
on Twitter about the plans, kind of teasing out the booth, how you're going to plan to build the booth. Are you worried yeah. that you're opening up too much of the kimono here and opening up, putting too much on the table? Because it's usually a secret. Yeah. Mobile World Congress is supposed to be secret, not yeah. publicly out there. What? What's the, you know. Well, I mean, I think this is just a little bit of a, the change that's happened post COVID, right? Um, you know, uh, people usually build their booth in uh, and don't reveal it until the first day of the show. And it's kind of like this excitement to go see what is their, what's their big message and what's their big reveal. And there's always fun stuff. Um, I think this year's a little bit different. It's the first, like I said, a first big event back. Um, I think I need to create a little bit of excitement for people who are going and maybe entice people that maybe you should think about coming. Um, I realize this is a super personal decision, right? It depends on where you are and the country and your your health and your status. But but if you can do it, I want people to know that the, you're going to miss out. It's going to be super fun. So, um, well, let's so take yeah. A, let's take a look at the booth. That's my next question. I want yeah. to see it. I know we have, guys, do we have that... Um, Rendering, let's pull that up and let's talk this through. Um, let's go look right. at the rendering. So you can see here on the screen, well, take, take us through this. Yeah, so what we want to do is give the sense of a, of Cloud City, right? And that's what we're calling the space. Um, in Cloud Cities, there's, in a city there's outdoor space like you see here, and then there's in, indoor space. And indoors is where you, where you work, um, where you buy, uh, where you meet. And so you can see here on the left, the demo stations um, that would have different vendors displaying, um, you know, and it kind of, it goes way back. I mean, what we're feeling, like I said, is like a football field, an American football field and a half, um, or a European uh, football field, a, a pitch. It's pretty, it's pretty extensive. And so we think we're going to have, I don't know, 20, 30 vendors showing um, their, their different software. Uh, I think we're, we're scheduling or, or planning for about 24 different meeting rooms that we can schedule. All COVID safe with the, with the space uh, requirements in there. But on the out, in that outdoor space um, it would be where you learn, right, the education. And then I think we're going to have this fabulous booth for the, for the Cube. It's going to look just so amazing with the backdrop of this amazing building. And, you know, I, I think I underappreciated or didn't really realize um, you know, how devastated both the event planning industry has been from COVID as well as construction. Um, you know, obviously when events were shut down, um, these companies had to lay off um, thousands of workers. Some of the big firms have laid off 50% of their workforce. And those people, not, you know, they didn't just go home and, and sit around. They, they had to come up with a livelihood. And those people have pivoted into another job and they're not really, I mean, events aren't really back yet. So some of these firms are shrunk, you know, the manpower is, is severely reduced. But then I think on the other side is, and you can see this in just housing construction, there's a lumber shortage, um, there's just shortage of materials. And so yeah. everything that we source for the booth um, pretty much has to come from Spain. And so when we look at the booth, um, you know, we have, uh, we have a, a pretty significant ceiling what looks like the roof of the building. It's an engineering feat uh, to do that we're still, you know, working through the, I'm sure someone with a protractor is doing lots of math. Um, you know, the glass, we have those huge, beautiful glass spans in the front, uh, getting a glass that spans that height. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's 18 feet. Um, it's six meters tall and that's going to be hard. Um, things like the flooring. I want to have like hardwood laminate flooring. So it looks like hardwood floors. Don't know if we can find them, right? They're like, why don't you do carpet? I'm like, can you just check one more vendor? I really want my floor. So, um, so we'll see how it goes. And yeah, I, I think that sharing this plan, the trials and tribulations, like how can this small startup, right? That usually, you know, take over a space that usually takes nine months to plan, right? Who is this girl? What is she doing? How are they going to pull this off? You know, I think it's like grab your popcorn and watch yeah. the train wreck or, you know, hero's journey, we get it done. Well, people are on Clubhouse, they're bored, they want to get out. Um, I think this is a case study. Mobile World Congress has a huge economic impact for the, as a show. It's got its own little economy built around it. It impacts the, the country of Spain and Barcelona, the city, great city, people love it. And so it certainly is notable and newsworthy. We will be following that story. I have to ask you more of a kind of a tactical question, if you don't mind, while I have you here. Um, can you talk about um, some of the vendors that are coming? 
uh, and the kinds of talks you're going to have inside the booth and, and how do people get involved? You mentioned it's open to people who love open RAN and yeah. open public cloud, open technologies. I mean, that's pretty much everybody uh, that's cool um, and relevant, which is like yeah. almost the whole world now. So like, is it going to be a space? Is there a criteria? How do people get involved? What's the collaboration formula? Yeah, no, I have been working on putting together a list of potential vendors. Um, you'd be surprised. Not everyone is, is as bullish as I am on the public cloud. And so uh, there is a little bit of a filtering criteria, but otherwise um, anyone can come, right? Enterprise software vendors in telco where their primary customer is a, a communications uh, service provider that's uh, their software runs on the public cloud. Come on in, right? Um, people using Open RAN, and, and it's still a little sort of small band of cohorts that are really trying to to drive this new technology forward, and and they're going up going up against some of the biggest companies in telco, right? They're going up against Huawei, they're going up against Ericsson. Both those guys are are very anti, and they're not really pro Open RAN because it's hugely disruptive to their business. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure those guys are not psyched to see Open RAN, uh, you know you know, become a thing in telco. And so uh, it's really sort of about disruptive technologies that are uh, that are in the in the booth. Um, and so yeah, uh, I'm paying for the space, I'm paying for the build out. Bring your demos, bring your people, uh, come with your marketing message and and let's and let's build a community. Um, and so we're talking to open RAN vendors like Mavenir which is a pretty big name in the open RAN, uh, open RAN space. Uh, I've been talking with Parallel Wireless and Altio Star. Those are also great players. Um, software vendors um, like Tatogi, which is a talk that I did uh, a little over a month ago about this new startup that has a web scale charger that they're, they're trying to put out there. Um, Aurea is another company that I'm really familiar with that has some cloud forward uh, software, um, and then little tiny startups like Zequence and um, some other up and comers that no one's heard of. So we're really excited to invite them into the booth. Um, I've been secretly stalking Elon Elon Ma Musk and Starlink and yeah. SpaceX to to be a part of it, and we'll see. Right, I'm kind of you know using Twitter and whatever I can to to reach out and see if they want to be a part of it. But yeah, it's kind of really open arms. Not really excluding. Well, Elon, I mean, Elon is very disruptive, and you know he reached out on. You can reach out on him on Twitter. He's accessible. I mean, you got to break through, but he has got a, his antenna up for innovators, people who think differently. Um, they love people who break down walls in markets where open wins. I mean, we we know there's a history. We've been covering it. I've been involved in my career. People who bet against open always lose. It's happened in every yeah. single wave of innovation. So, Elon's gettable. Yeah. Let's get him. Who doesn't love Elon Musk? I mean, I think some people don't. I love him, he's my hero. Um, I model a lot of the things that I do around uh, around his, his approach to his vision, right? 20 years ago, or close to 20 years ago, 2003, he said he was going to put people on Mars. And I think people laughed at him for being like the PayPal guy and this guy's crazy. But every year he makes progress uh, against his goals, right? We have a relandable rocket. He's doing a manned mission this week, a second manned mission or third manned mission. Uh, the guy makes progress. And I think I'm on the same same mission here. My mission is to move telco to the public cloud. I think it's a it's a long journey, right? And I think people are like, who's this girl? And she's like 12 people and what's your story? And I'm like, I don't care. I have a singular mission, it's a quest. I am not gonna stop until I move the industry to the public cloud. And I, it's my life's mission and I'm psyched to do it. Well, we love the, the mojo. We love your style. We love Elon Musk's mojo. And again, just to bring the dots together, you have that same mindset, which is, you know, as people, you know, love or, love or like uh, Elon, he's a builder, okay? He yeah. builds things and he delivers. So as you said, so Danielle, mm -hmm. I really appreciate uh, the work you're doing. I love your philosophy. Yeah. We're in total agreement, open, awesome. open, building, doing it together as a collective, being part of something. This is what the world needs. You got a lot of great ideas in the works and we can't wait to hear them and what you got coming up over the next 68 days. This is the first of many conversations together. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, that's no, going to be so awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Psyched to talk to you about it. Okay, Mobile go. World Congress is happening in Barcelona on the June 28th. It's going to be in person and it's going to be probably the biggest hybrid event to date. Be there, check out Telco DR and theCUBE and the space that they took over 
14 years at the helm there. Ericsson had it, now it's Telco DR. Danielle Royston's founder and CEO here with me from Telco DR. Thanks for watching.